my name is Jenny Chain. I'm the Gallery and Events Manager at the Broome County Arts Council Artists and Gallery. Artists and Gallery has become the go-to place for every First Friday event since our opening in October 2018. Our first virtual exhibition, Art Connects Us All, featured four artists from our past exhibition um, who work in very different discipline and style but present the same vitality through vibrant colors, composition, structure, and light and shadow. So at today's Art and Dialogue, we have Dave Porter. Dave, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jenny. I'm very happy to be part of this first ever virtual show at the Broome County Arts Council. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit of your background? Um, how does your training or experience affect your choice of medium and the way in what you create and also the subject that kind of draws that you're more interested in doing? Yes. Uh, well, I will say that I started making artwork as a child. Both my mother and my father were both very creative and uh, encouraged me and my siblings to make artwork and exhibit and shows. And uh, in high school, I continued making artwork and uh, I've just enjoyed doing it my whole life. So when I was in college, I didn't really initially intend on studying fine arts, but I gravitated toward fine arts and ultimately got my degree in studio fine arts from SUNY Albany. Um, However, when I graduated, I, I didn't pursue an art career. I joined the U.S. Navy and after uh, being in the Navy in the Western Pacific, I came back and studied engineering and chose that as my career. But I was always very active in making artwork uh, throughout my life. It's only lately that I have really started to pursue artwork uh, more intensely. So originally uh, I was more of a 2D type of artist. I, I love to draw and uh, I really enjoy printmaking and I enjoy painting. Um, I did some sculpture along the way, but it wasn't until, you know, at more of my adult life, uh, they start pursuing sculpture. Um, and I think I kind of transitioned from drawing to relief sculpture. It was kind of a natural transition. I really found uh, the relief sculpture and the drawing very similar. I, some of my drawings were tended to kind of draw shapes with depth. So it was kind of natural to go to um, you know, relief sculpture. And then eventually uh, I started experimenting with larger pieces, sculpture in the round, um, assemblies. Uh, the last show I was at the Broome County Arts Council featured a lot of mobiles. So I did a lot of mobiles in the past. Um, and the wood that I have used, uh, some of it I've purchased, some of it has been given to me. Um, some of the wood, the wood grain is very, very exciting. So after I carved it, uh, it, it looked wonderful. But some of the wood, uh, let's say basswood, maybe some pine or fir, was really kind of boring <laughs> once I was done carving it. So I thought, well, you know, how can I, uh, you know, kind of spice this up a little bit, make it more interesting. And then I decided uh, the one the one piece that is more geometrical, I decided to paint that. Um, and I and I like the effect. So I kind of continued off and on doing some sculptures. Uh, most of the wood sculptures I've done have not been painted, uh, but this show kind of features uh, works that are painted relief sculptures. Um, I've, I've got some show and tell. We have a local ski club here and um, I was asked to splice together 
an eight strand nylon rope. So as I was up there in the blizzard one night, I was taking photography of this whole splicing process. And uh, then when I got home over the next several weeks, I started playing around in Photoshop and kind of coming up with some variations on the, on, on the photography. And uh, I kind of, this is what I came up with as the basis for my carving. I call it twisted pairs. So there's four pairs of twisted nylon rope. Uh, and, and I kind of tweaked, kind of tweaked the, the digital image to look more bone-like, more sinewy, uh, which kind of matched the wood that I had, that I was planning to use. So I did select four pine panels from some repurposed uh, joists from my front porch <laughs> that were probably 150 years old or so, but they were kind of boring and they were kind of splintery. It wasn't really beautiful wood. Uh, and uh, so I decided that I would paint this piece and, and to kind of match blue and red and white and kind of, anyhow, that was the basis for my piece, Twisted Pears. Um, so I also did another, some other relief. I, I, some of my work is kind of whimsical. Uh, for instance, I started collecting remnants of soap from the shower. And I really like the way they photographed uh, on the white porcelain surfaces of the, of the bathroom. And uh, in fact, here, here's a baggie <laughs> of some other uh, slivers of soap. You know, I so hate, I hate to throw them out. <laughs> I hate to throw them out. Uh, and so I was starting to stick pieces of them together to <laughs> so that I could photograph. And at this point, I don't think I was necessarily thinking of the sculpture, yeah, I was kind of more interested in the imagery and the composition of these pieces of soap. I thought they were kind of seductive. Uh, and then I decided I would carve them, kind of a relief sculpture, and, and paint them. And then those are the other two pieces in the show right now are uh, soap number one and soap number two. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of summarizing here a little bit, you know, my, my relief sculpture, uh, desire to make relief sculptures kind of grew out of my drawing, my, my love for drawing. Uh, and then, you know, I did take painting in college, so I kind of mushed those two uh, art forms together, you know, the wood carving and the painting. Uh, it was more, I think, the desire to paint that was more because the wood grain was so boring. <laughs> it's trying to come so up with a painting. Uh, you know, I've kind of thought back to some of the Greek sculptures, and, and the, I, I think I read somewhere that a lot of those marble sculptures were painted or tinted at one time. You know, we don't think of them today as uh, painted sculptures, but I, I think at one time they were, had decorative paint or stain on them. I so see. That, that's a little bit of my my process, Jenny. I see. Thank you so much. That that's a really cool like transition. So can you um kind of take us through your creative process? I know that you've been like telling us a little bit of it, but can you like for example um one of like the twisted pairs that you just said like how how long did it take for you to finish a piece and what is the day like for you to work on it do you work at home at your studio or do you find insp inspiration when you're out in the field or how does it work sometimes it starts with um, somebody giving me an interesting piece of wood or in some cases uh, i 
feel like I have unfinished business with art projects from the past and that I feel are unresolved that I that I think you know I really need to address this. I really kind of need to bring this idea to the forefront and kind of complete it. Uh, sometimes I'm extremely motivated and I'll spend many hours down in my basement studio. I call it a studio. It's kind of a spider sanctuary more than it is a studio. It's got low, it's got a low ceiling. I've got a duct, but in the summertime it's wonderfully cool. I go down in my studio and I, I bang away. I really don't like to use uh, power tools. So I, I like to use traditional mallet and chisel. Um, and, and some of my pieces uh, take hundreds of hours to complete. Um, the relief, the low relief pieces are, are perhaps not that time consuming. Um, you know, the twisted pairs, that, that took me quite a while. So I, I first I, you know, carved the four different panels. Um, then I gessoed them, you know, as I would a canvas to, to seal them. And uh, at, at that point, I mounted them on a, uh, like a half inch plywood back. Uh, to work on them, to paint on them all together. I tried to, you know, not necessarily complete one panel at a time, but kind of paint and work all over. Um, you know, there's something kind of contemplative about carving down in the basement. You know, you've got the rhythm of the mallet and the chisel. And uh, at first I used big chisels and removing big pieces of wood and they're flying all over the place. Um, I really like the chisel marks. I, I like to see them. I don't, sometimes I'll work on a piece and with smaller chisels to remove the chisel marks, but I really like the kind of the shimmer and kind of the texture that the chisel marks leave. I don't do sandpaper or anything else. I, I have recently started to work on some bigger pieces uh, using a small chainsaw. Uh, but that, that's kind of a departure. I've really tried to rely mostly on traditional woodworking tools. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's kind of my process, Jenny. Sounds like a lot of hard work. And, you're, and most of your work are really large scale, right? Not, not necessarily. I do have some very small pieces uh, that I've done. Uh, I'll say, you know, four by five inches, eight inches square. Um, it, it's more interesting to kind of work on different scale projects. Uh, I have kind of gotten bigger more recently, both with the sculpture and paintings, mm -hmm. but I, I think um, kind of varied in size, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you think that you will be starting to use more colors in your work I don't know. I don't really have any plans at this point in time to do any other painted sculptures. The ones I've been doing more recently, um, some pieces of wood that are very interesting, uh, you know, without the paint. So I, I think at some point I would like to pursue the soap series. I have some other exciting soap photography that I think <laughs> And it's uh, a nice scale, uh, you know, the ones I've done so far are probably under 24 inches by 18 inches, something like that. So I, I would like to pursue that, uh, that project a little further. With some wow. We're looking forward to more soaps. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of like brings us to the last question um, how do you think your art connects um, you to others and how other may be connect to your art? Well, I, I, th I thought about this question um, ahead of time, Jenny, and I really, I, the, the connectivity for me is really a, a, a temporal connectivity to things that I have started in the past. And of course, there's, there's people 
connected to all my work. There's my uh, professors who, who instructed me. There's uh, you know, people who've enjoyed my art over the years. But really, I find myself continually reaching back to the past to connect with you know, concepts or ideas that uh, that I really like. I, I think if anyone were to study my work, they would find uh, certain veins of, of interest. Uh, the casual observer might look at my work and say, well, you really don't focus on anything. You're like, you're all over the place here. But uh, I really do. For instance, I'm a, I have a painting in my house now that I uh, started in 1975 and never completed. And now I'm finally completing it after all these years. So uh, that's just kind of an example of, of reaching into the past to connect my past with the, with the present. Thank you so much for sharing so, um, so many stories and how you work. And this exhibition, Art Connects Us All, will be on view starting from June 5th to August 29th, available on Broome County Arts Council's website under Artisan Galleries page. We will have a viewing room available. And if you have any questions on anything or you want to learn more about a, an artwork, please email us at artisangallery at broomarts.org. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us, Dave. Thank you, Jenny. And I hope to see all these art patrons at the virtual show. I will see you there. Yeah.